Our next topic is the question, what is a molecule? And if you looked at the previous video, we talked about ions, and ions are atoms that either lose or gain an electron. So let's say we have a sodium atom right here, which has 11 protons in the nucleus, and therefore it has 11 electrons. It has two in the innermost energy level, it has eight more in the second energy level, and finally, the 11th electron is situated in the third energy level all by itself. And therefore, there's not a lot of attraction between this electron and the rest of the atom. So it is easily removed. In other words, what we say is, this atom is easily ionized. We can easily remove an electron from, the, from that atom, which then causes only to have 10 electrons, which means 10 electrons, 11 protons, it will be negatively charged. Chlorine has 17 protons in the nucleus. It has therefore 17 electrons. The first two reside in the innermost energy level. The next eight reside in the next energy level. And then the next seven, making a total of 17, reside in the third energy level. Now there's more room than, than uh, eight electrons in the third energy level, but that's another video later on. But there is at least room in the s and the p orbitals for eight electrons. And notice that there is one missing. It wants to have one more. Now, you say, well, why does it? Because it has 17 protons, 17 electrons. It's neutral, electrically neutral. It's balanced. But there's a tendency for atoms to want to fill. And of course, they don't have personalities. But because of electrical attractions, they want to fill this open spot with electron. There's kind of a draw, a force pulling something in. So here's a force pulling electron in. There's not a lot of attraction between this electron and this molecule. So when these two get together, there's this tendency for this electron to hop ship and go to the chlorine atom, making this a negatively charged ion. And this then therefore becomes a positively charged ion. So this will have a net plus one charge. This will have a net negative one charge. This, of course, will now have an extra electron. This one will be missing an electron. Now those two ions, this being a cation, this being an anion, will end up attracting each other because they're now oppositely charged, and they will then form a bond. Hmm. So now it's a molecule. Now, the way we like to write that is we like to write the nucleus, like Na, with the number of electrons in the outer shell. Now, notice... In this case, in the outer shell, there's only one electron in the outer shell. And um, <clears throat> then in the innermost shell, that there's, of course, eight in the innermost shell, but only one in the outermost shell. And here we have chlorine that has seven in the outermost shell, like that. So you can easily see, then, that this electron will tend to come in here and form a bond between those two. So we end up with sodium and chlorine like that. And chlorine is now all happy because it now has eight electrons in the innermost shell. And so this now forms a bond between the sodium and the chloride, which means this is now a molecule. And molecules are formed through this attractive forces between negative and positive ions. So this is actually a positive ion. That's a negative ion. They attract together and form molecules. Now notice sodium chloride is actually the chemical name for simple salt, the salt that our bodies need, the salt that's in our salt shaker. So this is what we would call table salt, or edible salt, that we consume and that we need in our bodies. And that's formed from sodium, which is a metal, and chlorine, chlorine which is a non-metal. And you form them together, and you get table salt, a very interesting combination. Now, there's other kinds of ways in which atoms bound together. For example, let's say we have an oxygen atom. Here's another oxygen atom. There's O for oxygen. And in the outermost level, of course, we have two electrons in the inner level. Then we have the second level with six electrons. So let's say we have uh, one electron here, one electron there. So three, four, five, and six. Uh, actually, yeah, that's the way to do that. So we have one, two, three, four, five, and six. Notice that both oxygen atoms would like to have eight electrons in their outer orbit, uh, or I should say their outer energy level or their outer shell. And there's only six. How do you, well, how do you manage to make a bond between that? 
Well, what they do is they say, well, we can share some electrons. So what, does the, what happens then is the two oxygen atoms come together. They still each account for four electrons, like so. And then they take these two right here and these two right here and share them kind of like 50-50. 50% 50 -50. 50 of the time they belong to one of the oxygen atoms, 50% of the time they belong to the other oxygen atoms. Of course, they don't bounce back and forth 50% of the time. But in actuality, what happens then is those four electrons become four shared electrons between the two oxygen atoms. And so part of the time, this oxygen, atoms, this oxygen atom will have eight. Part of the time, this oxygen atom will have eight electrons, and they're both happy. So they, those electrons will go back and forth between the oxygen atoms. When they go to one side, then this will be more negatively charged, and this will be more positively charged, and they'll attract each other. When they move to the other side, this will be more, more negatively charged, and this one will be most, more positively charged, and they'll attract each other. So they will always attract each other because the electrons will always be on one side or the other side, causing both of them to be ions. One at a time, they'll be positively negatively charged, and therefore this then forms a molecule. And this is, forms the O2 molecule, which is the way oxygen exists in our atmosphere. Oxygen atoms tend not to be on their own. They tend to want to look to bond with other atoms to gain those two extra electrons, which they so badly need to try to form a total of eight in their outer shell or outer level. So that's how atoms or that's how molecules are formed. We take atoms that either have a lack or an excess of electrons. Those electrons are then shared. Sometimes they're shared like this. Sometimes they're shared by moving one electron from one atom to the other atom. And then they're electrically charged. And then they attract each other because of the difference in the electrical charge. And that's how, we, that's how molecules are formed.